Hello everyone, Louisa Jewell here. One of my favorite quotes is by Thich Nhat Hanh, a Buddhist monk who wrote, no mud, no lotus. Now the lotus flower is one of the most beautiful flowers on the planet and yet it grows in like the, the grossest muck you can find. And so what he means by that saying is that when we go through really, really hard times, it allows us to learn and grow and grow in our compassion for others. For example, when I went through my divorce, it allowed me to understand a little bit more about people who are going through divorces. I never would have really truly understood that if I didn't go through it myself. So sometimes it is through these hard times that allow us to learn and grow and become better and understand maybe what we don't want in our lives, but also understand that our lives could actually be better as a result of these hard times, even as beautiful as a lotus flower. And it reminds me of an exercise that was created by my good friend, Dr. Tayab Rashid, and it's called the doors opening exercise. Now, sometimes when we go through hard times, we are angry, we are frustrated, we are upset. And sometimes it can feel like a door is closed when we've been rejected, when we've applied for a job and we didn't get accepted, or when we were going down a certain path and it went in the wrong way, something we didn't want to have happen. I'm trying to sell my house right now and the deal fell through. These are things that they can feel like closed doors. And sometimes we are so angry and frustrated and we ruminate about these things so much. We stand in front of that closed door, trying to pound it down. So fixated on what was taken away from us. So fixated on that loss. And what the doors opening exercise allows us to do is to turn in the other direction to move away from the closed door and look towards the doors that are opening. So many, many years ago, I had a terrible thing happen to me and I was so fixated on those closed doors, so fixated on my loss that I became depressed and anxious and I had to actually go see a psychologist to help me get through this depression. Again, it was decades ago. Now, through that very, very difficult time, he actually gave me some books to read because I said, I really have to take care of my own mental health here. I need to learn, I need to read up on this. And he actually recommended a book by Dr. Martin Seligman. Now, Dr. Martin Seligman is considered the founding father of positive psychology. And after reading that book, I discovered the Master of Applied Positive Psychology program. And I applied and I got in and I did my master's degree and I applied everything I learned to myself and I never became clinically depressed again. And then, of course, I went on to found the Canadian Positive Psychology Association. I went on to make positive psychology my life's work. And I speak all across the country and in North America about positive psychology, about resilience. I teach practitioners, I teach everybody about positive psychology. And had those bad things not happened to me, I would have never discovered my life's purpose, my life's path, something that makes me so incredibly joyous every single day. It is so meaningful to me to do this work. So think about, you know, if you want to think about the coronavirus or maybe something else in your life where a door has closed, you know, can you turn away? Can you see perhaps the new path that it is leading you on? Can you see the light at the end of the tunnel to say, maybe this had to happen in my life for me to see something better, for me to see something different? Maybe you can't see it yet, but can you be open to the possibility? Dr. Tayab Rashid asks us to think about a past event that brought you on a new, better path.
If you can remind yourself of something that happened to you in the past that brought you to a better place, perhaps you can see hope today for a better future. So that is the doors opening exercise. And I love that exercise, especially when we feel that we've had a tremendous loss. And I just want to finish by saying that through the death of George Floyd, I feel that this was a tremendous loss. Watching the video, I was only able to see it once because I was so tremendously saddened and outraged by what happened. But I also know that that is not the first time that this has happened to our African American community, to all African Americans who can cite many different situations of police brutality and being abused. And I am just so grateful that the whole world was so traumatized by that, was so outraged that now we are not going to let this go. And I want to say that I support Black Lives Matter. I, they need our support right now. We need to end this kind of police brutality. We need to end systematic racism in Canada, especially since I am Canadian and we are Canadians here. And we need to end it all around the world. But I just want to say that I uh, am with you and I am going to continue to fight and support until there are changes that will take place and will take hold. Because again, this is not new. We need to see this through. So I want to say thank you to all of you for being, for following, for listening. Uh, I'm here to support you at this time during the pandemic and everything that's going on. And uh, I want to always wish you well. All right, see you next time.